to niche or not to niche? That is really the question. Both Hilda and I have a lack of experience in some areas when we're building our business. Coming from a corporate background, we never had to worry about searching or creating a niche or about what our perfect customer or who our perfect customer would be. And these two topics are crucial when you want your knowledge, your expertise, your products, and the value you can provide to reach the people that are looking for your interpretation, your voice, and your leadership. But exactly finding our niche has proven to be hard for us. Okay, there's the lack of experience, like I told you, but surely this is something that you can study and get right, right? Well, we haven't been able so far to narrow down and maybe it's because we don't have the patience to go through the thinking exercise or maybe we don't want to narrow down our market. Maybe it's because it's not clear to us how to determine what our niche should be. We are both multi-talented people with a variety of interests and we're afraid that narrowing down will put us in a box that we cannot move out of. And then I started investigating and I came up with some conflicting information. So according to Russell Bronson, the reason that if you have been trying to sell something and you're struggling, my guess is 99% of the time it's because you have a market problem more than anything else. And so I'm going to kind of explain to you the history of how this whole thing worked. Okay. Now, if you look at it, there are basically there's three core markets. There's health, wealth, health, wealth, and relationships. These are the three core markets. And almost everything we sell is found inside of one of these three markets. Uh, the first person jumped in, they're like, I'm going to be a wealth coach. And they started teaching wealth, right? And there's someone in health, teaching health, and someone in relationships. And they were the only ones. But then what happened? Everyone started looking around like, that guy's teaching health? Like, I know about health. I could be a health coach too. And they start jumping in this market and suddenly there's two, then five, then 10, then 100, then 1,000. And this market right here goes from being a really blue ocean to a really red, bloody ocean where everyone's fighting over customers, right? And so this is what happened a little while back. And then what happened next was the market started evolving from these three core markets into what we call sub-markets. So someone jumped out and said, I'm just going to teach finance. Someone said, I'm going to teach investing. I'm going to teach real estate. I'm going to teach sales. I'm going to teach internet marketing, right? And these markets started breaking down. And all these people now in these blue oceans that were amazing, right? But then what happened? Someone else is like, well, I know how to do real estate. I'm going to teach that too. He's making a lot of good money. They jumped in. Also, there were two people, then five, then 10, and all of a sudden, the waters became bloody. Now, the market that we are in today, the market you have inherited, this is where it's at. And so what you have to figure out is, first off, what are, which one of these three markets are you in? And then what is the sub-market you're in? And then the last step is you have to create your own niche. Notice I didn't say pick a niche. Everyone says, you can go pick a niche or a niche or whatever you want to call it. Like, I'm going to pick a niche I'm going to be in. Okay, if you pick a niche, by definition of that phrase, you just jumped into a red ocean. Do you understand that? If you are picking a niche, you failed. Okay, it's going to become very difficult for you to be successful. You have to figure out what's your sub-market and you have to create your own market. Jasmine Starr says, One of the most important questions I get asked from business owners is how to find your niche. Now, I believe it's important because when you're building a business, when you can focus on a very specific group of people, you'll have an easier time becoming an industry leader and an authority in your field. Do you need to have a niche? No. But will a niche help you quicker because you'll be able to build a specific business for specific needs? Yes. When you listen to Marisa Morgator, she says, because the more specific you are, the more universal you become. And you stop being this general bargain based big help everyone with everything kind of coach. And you become someone who's got a specialty and who becomes known for helping people around that specialty. And this is what Gary V says. Your niche is you, the human. Yeah. And everyone's like, oh, I need a niche, which actually means I need to stay narrow in something and just talk about football. Yeah. That's the reverse. You need to be as broad as possible, but fully you, which becomes your niche. After looking at what all these people said, I went like, I don't want to niche down. I have so many things I love to do and so many services that I want to offer. And if I hear one more guru tell me that I have to niche down in order to be successful, I'm going to go bananas. So now what? I'm not a bit further than before I started to investigate. They're all giving conflicting information or not. Maybe they all say the same, but in other words or starting from another angle. Anyway, we decided to go with Gary V and apply that to what Russell says. 
find the market segment and create your niche. Or maybe even niches, plural, because being multi-talented, which by the way, is not the same as being a generalist. We have multiple specialties and we will show them and ourselves even more in upcoming videos. By the way, if you want to learn what your passion or multiple passions are, watch our video, Finding Your Dot. <laughs>